Hello, welcome to Talk Audio TV. This is a take, I think, about 15. Um, in the back of this car are some enormous JBL loudspeakers because this is the Volvo belonging to Mark Hockey, who is a uh, bit of a crucial cog at Harman Consumer UK. Hello, Mark. Good morning, Adam, and how are you today? I'm very well indeed, although I've been uh, really fluffing my lines up to now. We're here to look at the JBL MS2, are we not? We are indeed. It's a small little handheld device to give DSP processing to any MP3 or iPod device that you've got in your car to basically make those products sound better. So you, you plug this into the uh, 3.5mm jack or socket in a car if you've got one I take it. Absolutely. Basically out of your device into the auxiliary socket of your head unit or into the auxiliary uh, input of your car and away you go. And in this particular Volvo down here we've got, um, there we go, 3.5mm pluggy right there. And this is the device, this little slab of electronics which of course you would I'll get the uh, camera thing out of the way there. You'd normally have that hidden away. Show us how's the, how this thing goes because this is plugged into um, uh, my iPod Touch 4th gen, which rather cheekily I've stuffed in the slot of the CD player in this car. Um, it's showing aux on the display there, if I can waggle that about, and showing we've got a decent bit of volume going on there. So uh, show us how this thing works, Mark. Well, basically, Adam, as I said already, you basically plug this into your auxiliary device, this lead into your car audio head unit or into your car audio auxiliary input. Right. You then basically hold it close to your head. Uh -huh. You press a button. It then does some audio trickery, and at that point it's now DSP'd your car. So it's basically set your new levels for treble, impact and bass, and also set up your image stereo position as well. Bloody hell. Um, now, I've had a bit of a listen to this, had a bit of a play. We do have a stereo microphone on this device. Now, years ago, I remember Raymond Baxter on Tomorrow's World showing a, uh, a flame tweet and saying, your television will not have the uh, resolution. And, of course, um, your YouTube is being watched on your computer through a set of speakers. You may or may not be able to hear the, uh, the differences here, but we're going to uh, play a bit of a tune and uh, see if you can tell the with and without, because there's the, the defeat button there. So if we take the volume down a bit, go over to the uh, <laughs> iPod touch holder. Sorry, that's uh, <laughs> your CD slot. And uh, let's have a little bit of uh, Adele, because uh, she's so beautiful and you want to sort of... I find hi-fi guys want to sort of play it so clearly in their car that they can reach out and kiss the girl. Ooh. Okay, there we are. Now that's running at the moment with the processor. Let's turn the processor off and then look out at the view. So we're listening from your position, Mark. Okay, now we'll turn up the music a bit and then I'll shut up and watch you uh, go from one to the other. Switch that again. Wait till I start singing again. Got to the end of the track there. Interesting stuff. That's unprocessed. Whoa. Now, of course, uh, the Raymond Baxter effect on Tomorrow's World. I don't know how much of that you could hear, but in here, what happened was uh, instead of doors with speakers playing stuff, I had a stereo image across the front of the dashboard. How does it do that, dude? That is a little box with a lot of power. Absolutely, Adam. Well, I mean, as I said, this is basically a DSP processor. So what it's doing is looking at the way the sound is actually performing in the car, taking some measurements, and then setting those measurements up, not only tonally, but also in terms of timing as well. So effectively, it's correcting for the positions your speaker, your car speakers are in, and therefore uh, giving you an image which you wouldn't be able to get normally. And in the meanwhile, of course, the various little parameters that are on this thing, um, you can mess with slightly, so you could turn the bass up or down. The one marked impact is, I suppose, mid-band, but there's, uh, and the whole sort of image spread thing, it's a damn clever thing. And this is working with whatever you can put in your car by OEM. It's making sure that it's tuning that to the best. This is a piece that you could never afford to have in your car for OEM. They wouldn't, um, uh, infotainment will be shut down in two minutes. We're going to live with that, Blake. We've had so many takes, believe me. Um, that's because we've been parked and good old Volvo, they don't want to waste their batteries in case you're somewhere in a sodding snowdrift in Sweden. <laughs> but, um, Mark, thank you very much indeed. The JBL MS2, it's a damn clever little spud. And how much is that? 
It's going to retail for just under £150. Oh, and, of man. course, it's available from all our specialist retailers, JBL.com. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just, again, look online if you want any additional details. Or, of course, go to your website and find all the specifications there as well. Oh, you're a smooth-talking chap. Thank you very much, Steve, Mike. That's brilliant. That's uh, the best 150 quid you're going to spend this Christmas or any other. Upgrade your OEM without getting amongst it. Something that tucks in the glove box and makes people go... How does your car sound so much better than mine? Most impressed fat bloke of uh, Talk Audio TV signing out. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Adam.